There are thousands of Premiere Pro plugins, but most of them are not worth your time. These are the plugins you should actually know about because they make editing easier and save you hours of time on every project. We'll start with the free plugins and then move on to the paid ones, from cheapest to most expensive. I also added chapter timestamps to this video if you want to skip around, and I left links to every single plugin in the description below if you want to get any of them for yourself. Also, many of the paid plugins have free trials if you want to test them out before buying them. So let's get into it. Kicking off the free plugins, we have Smoothify, which makes easing your keyframes easier. Instead of wrestling with the built-in keyframe graph editor and trying to get that perfect motion from your keyframes, you can just use this plugin. You can set your playhead between two keyframes, create a curve on the graph where the x-axis is time and the y-axis is the value of the property that you're animating, and then apply that curve to any property that has a start and an end keyframe and watch it go to work giving your motion this silky smooth acceleration and deceleration in a single click. Arrow lets you copy images, whether it's from the web or a frame inside Premiere, and paste it directly onto your Premiere timeline. As you can see, it's built around four simple buttons. One saves a still frame to your clipboard so you can paste it anywhere, and the other three drop whatever's copied on your clipboard onto the Premiere timeline in different ways. In my opinion, this is a must have because it skips the process of manually saving images to a folder like this and then dragging it into Premiere, it'll just save you hours of time across all of the projects that you edit. Portal keeps your frequently used assets just one click away. Instead of digging through folders, you just pin your favorite ones, so maybe that's music, sound effects, graphics, whatever, right inside Premiere. And when you open a folder from Portal, it opens that folder in your Finder window, allowing you to access your go-to files in seconds. So it's perfect for speeding up edits where you reuse the same assets again and again because you never have to leave Premiere and navigate your local files just to hunt them down. Film Impact used to be a paid subscription plugin, but now it's built right into Premiere, which I think is awesome. That means you get access to almost 100 transitions and effects, things like rounded crops, 3D spins, light leaks, and a lot more without paying any extra. And all of these effects are really fast, they're GPU accelerated and come with very intuitive controls that go way beyond stock effects and transitions within Premiere. Premiere Composer gives you a library of ready to use transitions, effects, and animated graphics right inside of Premiere. Plus, you get a nice little library where you can access Mogurt templates that you've downloaded or made yourself. So for example, I made this highlight Mogurt and I can access it from Premiere Composer and just drag it straight onto my timeline. Nice little thing to have. Now, I put this in the free tier because honestly, the free version already comes with a solid starter pack of a bunch of animations, transitions, elements, and sound effects plus the handy user library. But if you want more, there is a paid pack with a massive collection of additional assets. Plume pack is basically the project manager feature that is native to Premiere if you've ever used that, but it's just better. So instead of spitting out a messy new project file with broken bins and a ton of unused media, Plume pack trims and consolidates your project by removing everything you don't need. And it does all of that while keeping your folder and bin structure perfectly intact in packages that other people can actually understand when you hand off a project to someone else. So those are all of the free plugins that I would recommend. Now the paid section will be from cheapest to most expensive, but I'm also gonna split it up between one-time payments and recurring payments or subscription payments. So to kick off our one-time payment plugins, we have Grave Robber, which is literally a one button plugin, but it's also a must have that solves a giant annoyance in Premiere. And that annoyance is unnesting clips. So if you've ever nested clips to stay organized or maybe add an effect or a transition and then later realized you wanted the clips that you nested back on your main timeline, then you know this pain. For some reason, unnesting is not built into Premiere like nesting is. And Grave Robber fixes that with a single click. All you have to do is select the nested sequence, hit the dig it up button, and it digs up all of the original clips right back to where they belong, perfectly in place. Without this, you'd have to double click into your nested sequence, copy the nested clips, and paste them back onto your timeline. So if you never want to do that again, this is the answer. It's just a shame that it's not already a native feature in Premiere. Auto Motion Tracker for Objects brings real motion tracking into Premiere without having to open an After Effects composition. All you have to do is track the movement of something using a mask layer for a random effect like Gaussian Blur, and then you can simply copy the mask tracking points that you made, click on Get from Clipboard, and then paste as transform to the layer 
that you want to add the tracking data to. And voila, it tracks almost perfectly to the scene, saving you from the old painful workflow of manually keyframing for hours in Premiere or round tripping through After Effects just to get a simple track. Anchor allows you to automatically move the anchor point of your clips. You can move it relative to the clip itself or even a group of selected clips. And if your clip has transparency, you can select the alpha mode, which allows you to only set anchor points based on what is visible. And normally if you want to change where a clip scales or rotates from, then you'd have to manually drag that little anchor point target around and it just never quite snaps to where you want. So this is definitely a nice to have plugin. Looper Pro takes any keyframed animation and loops it automatically in three different styles. So instead of copy and pasting your keyframes over and over just to get this effect, you just tell it to repeat either as a continuous cycle, a ping pong motion, or an offset using any time interval that you want. It works on anything with start and end keyframes, position, scale, opacity effects, you name it. And you can also choose whether to have it loop from the keyframes to the out point or from the in point to the keyframes. Transmitter moves the keyframes from Premiere's built-in motion properties over to a transform effect allowing for a bit more control. Basically, this allows you to animate by setting keyframes under motion and then clicking and dragging elements directly on your program monitor for more precise movements. Then once you've done that, you can hit transmit, which adds a transform effect and migrates the keyframes that you just made from motion to that transform effect. Random Wiggler is basically the wiggle expression in After Effects, but now you can use it in Premiere, allowing you to add customizable wiggle movements to properties like position, scale, rotation, skew, and opacity one at a time or even all at once. You just need to select how aggressive you want that wiggle to be. You can make the wiggle subtle like a handheld camera shake or extreme for intense motion graphics. And finally, you can create presets that you can reuse later. Shifter Pro is all about staircasing the clips on your timeline in style. Instead of manually offsetting layers one by one, you can staircase them automatically. And you can also add custom easing curves to offset layers in a unique way if you want to. Watchtower keeps your Premiere bins perfectly in sync with your local folders. So normally, if you add media to a Finder or Explorer folder, Premiere has no idea. So even after adding media to a folder on your local files, you have to re-import those assets into Premiere and reorganize them by hand. But with Watchtower, you choose the folders that you want to be watched, and then the moment you drop a file into one of those folders on your computer, it shows up automatically in the right bin inside Premiere. This is the very first plugin that I bought for Premiere, and honestly, I have no regrets. The next plugin is called Spellbook. Now, this is not a plugin as we've seen it, but more of an interface that allows you to work with the other plugins much easier. I highly recommend this. Let me show you what I mean. Now, a few of the plugins that I've shown you are from Knights of the Editing Table. These include Arrow, Grave Robber, Portal, Watchtower, and more. Now what Spellbook allows you to do is control these different plugins using shortcuts. So for example, let's look at Grave Robber because it's the most simple. So there are two buttons here, Show Grave Robber and Dig It Up. So one of them will open up the plugin and one of them will just do the action of digging up a nested sequence. And so I'm gonna set a shortcut using Spellbook for Grave Robber of Option Command D and that is an available shortcut. I'll hit OK, and let's just nest this sequence really quickly. So now we have our nested sequence, and let's try this out, Option Command D, and as you can see, it performs the action of Gravedigger with a simple shortcut. Now, not only does Spellbook speed up your editing process a ton, but it also cleans up your interface a lot, because if we had Grave Robber open, for example, then depending on where we put it, it might take up a lot of room. Drag Zoom Pro is the easiest way to create clean zooms inside Premiere. Instead of manually keyframing scale and position, you literally just draw a box around what you want to zoom into, and the plugin does the rest. You can automate the zoom in automatically and then also animate the zoom out automatically with the click of a button. And you can also shorten or lengthen the duration of the zoom if you'd like. Now one downside is that it doesn't really ease the keyframes in a way that I would like. So you have to manually add that if you want that. So if you're like me and you're picky about motion curves, then this might feel a little stiff to you. If the Smoothify plugin isn't feature rich enough for you, Easify 3 Pro is basically the pro version. Like Smoothify, it takes the pain out of keyframe easing, but Easify gives you a lot more control with your curves, more presets, the ability to apply easing to more than two keyframes at one time, reversing the keyframes, and more. Basically, if Smoothify had a pro version, this would probably be it. Supertone Clear is different from all of the others so far, because it's an audio plugin for cleaning up dialogue. With just a couple sliders, it removes background noise, reverb, and room echo while keeping voices sounding natural. So here's an example of what it can do. 
I'm recording this video so you can see how hard it is to hear me while there's background noise going on, but how good it is and how easy it is to hear me once we add this plugin. And I think for most editors and creators, clear will probably be more than enough. Neat Video is the industry standard plugin for denoising footage in Premiere. Basically, it analyzes a flat patch of your image, it builds a noise profile, and then it removes that noise while keeping as much detail as possible. Sure, the results aren't perfect, but it's pretty good, and it's not the fastest plugin in the world, but denoising is just heavy on your GPU. So in my opinion, for these results, it's pretty worth it. Captioneer takes Premiere's objectively ugly built-in captions and makes them actually usable. This plugin gives you clean, customizable templates that look professional right out of the box. Like for example, we have these Acura subtitles. And what's cool is that you can also select your own plugin styles as Mogurts if you have any. Now this can be especially useful if you make a lot of short form content because on short form platforms, nice looking captions are pretty much the standard nowadays. Excalibur is my favorite plugin. It's basically a mini command center inside of Premiere. So instead of digging through the effects menu or remembering endless shortcuts, you just hit your hotkey to open it up, type what you're looking for, and Excalibur finds it instantly and applies it to the clip that you have selected. That can be anything from applying Lumetri color to running one of your own custom macros. Oh yeah, you can add custom macros to Excalibur as well. Basically, you can build your own multi-step actions and trigger them with a single keystroke. Let's say I want to set up a command that makes a new adjustment layer. Type in the name of your command, click on add command, and then search for the effect you need. Then all we have to do is pull up Excalibur with our keystroke and search for new adjustment layer. And when we click on that, it not only creates a new adjustment layer, but it adds it to your timeline as well. So this plugin is definitely a must have. Film Convert has been around for a while and it's one of the most popular film emulation plugins. It gives you a library of film stock looks, grain emulation and color profiles. And the halation option recreates that warm glow that you get around the highlights when you're shooting on real film. So if you shoot on digital, but you're going for a film look, then this is really cool. And what's great is you can dial in the intensity of the grain, the size and the halation effect to taste. Beautybox is a skin retouching plugin that smooths out blemishes and wrinkles while keeping the natural detail in the subject's face. It automatically detects your skin tones, applies subtle smoothing, and even adds options to fine tune how strong the effect is. So if you work on interviews, corporate shoots, or social videos where you want people to be looking their best, this can be an absolute lifesaver. Finally, we have the subscription plugins. Now this is more of a group of plugins, but basically you want a stock asset plugin like Epidemic, Artlist, or even Motion Array. Now, right now I'm using Epidemic, so I'm gonna show you this process using that plugin. And basically they allow you to just search for any stock asset that you want. So I'm gonna search for a sound effect here, and then all you have to do once you find the sound effect that you like is just drag it directly onto your timeline. So no downloading it from the web, moving it to the folders that you want, and then dragging it into Premiere. This solves that process in one click and drag. AutoCut is a plugin with a lot of rich features, but I use it mainly to cut up podcasts. It runs through a bunch of raw footage from your podcast, switches the camera angles for you, and even chooses the speakers to show at the right time. But like I said, it's feature rich and there are a ton of other features that you might find useful. If you want to check out some alternatives to AutoCut, there are FireCut and AutoPod, but AutoCut has been the most reliable for me and I think it's also the cheapest, so it's a great option to go with. Boris Sapphire is one of the most powerful and polished effects suites out there. It comes with hundreds of effects, realistic lens flares, glows, warps, film looks, and unique transitions that instantly make your edit look high-end. Honestly, you've probably seen Sapphire at work in commercials, TV, and feature films. It's that widely used. But the trade-off here is the price. It's easily the most expensive plugin on this list. If you're working in client-heavy environments or just want your videos to have that Hollywood polish, then Sapphire is the gold standard. So, there you have it. Again, the links to all of these plugins are in the description below. And if you grab any of these through the links, then they really help support the channel. So thank you. Also, let me know in the comments section if I missed any cool plugins. And if you want to get even faster at editing, you might want to check out this video right here.